So, uh, so let me do these uh, three reading questions. I've done the other three at a previous session before. So these three are the ones that I haven't done that might be good to do. So this question asks, if the length of a pendulum is doubled, its period will... Okay. <laughs> um, if it feels like it hasn't given you enough information, well, it's given you the bare minimum necessary information. So it has mentioned the word pendulum. And what the question writer is anticipating is that you are familiar with this simple pendulum setup, which we've used to, uh, intro not introduce, we've used to, to uh, as an example of a simple harmonic oscillator motion or something that becomes close enough to simple harmonic oscillator motion that we can treat it the same way. So, um, this question is really relying on your knowledge of the simple harmonic oscillator. And um, with the simple harmonic oscillators, the one of the things we covered is that they have natural frequency of oscillation. For something like uh, mass on spring, you have seen this formula, square root of uh, k over m. <laughs> I have it uh, memorized, but I kind of need a refresher from here, time to time. And here, um, so when you're talking about pendulum, these parameters are not the ones mattering. Uh, as you have seen when we cover the pendulum, the mass of the pendulum doesn't matter. It kind of cancels out from the, exp the expressions when you do the derivation. What matters is the length of the pendulum. And because it's a gravitational interaction, uh, what kind of gravitational acceleration is present in the uh, local environment? So, so this is one where it would be, um, if you happen to have this formula memorized, you can answer this super quickly. You can answer it in less than a minute. I know I'm taking longer than that, but I could have done it if I wasn't explaining it. So this is the formula. Uh, angular frequency of a pendulum is square root of g over l. And I have this memorized. I have it memorized in a similar way. I have the formula for the mass of the spring memorized. First, I have the square root thing memorized. And uh, the other thing I have uh, kind of memorized or have a sense of is as these parameters, how the frequency or period changes. With the spring, steeper spring means a faster oscillation and larger mass means a slower oscillation. So that's how I remember this. With the pendulum, the way I remember is, well, if gravitational force is greater, then it would mean faster oscillation. So that's how I remember G here. And the longer means uh, greater rotational inertia, so slower oscillation. That's how I remember L here. Now, if you somehow don't have it memorized, that's why I have the textbook here, you can look it up in the textbook. I mean, this is one of those formulas that uh, I think for future physics majors, you probably want to have it memorized. It's uh, one of those things that occur frequently enough that you will seem smart for having those these memorized. But you know, if you don't have it memorized, it's fine. You just uh, have to know where to look it up from. That's really all that's needed. So I mean, the pendulum is a section of the textbook. There's all description of simple pendulum, whole derivation, small angular approximation I hear. This is really all you need. So once you have that, then once they say, okay, length of the pendulum is doubled, so the denominator here is becoming greater, and they are asking for period, so it's the reciprocal. It's proportional to the reciprocal of the angular frequency. So the longer length would mean greater period for slower oscillation, so it would increase by a factor of square root of two because of that square root. Good. Let's look at next two questions. So it says the differential equation <laughs> that governs the damped harmonic motion is different from that for simple harmonic motion in that, oh, yeah. Um, so uh, let me... Uh, Close this. So the simple harmonic motion, the defining feature of that is what we call equation of motion. I think you've, 
equation of motion. I think you've seen me write this. It really comes, it's a rewritten version of Newton's second law. And I guess it's rewritten in a way to highlight the double derivative, that's the acceleration, double time derivative position, that's equal to minus uh, k over n times x as a function of time. And in solving for this is where you get those sinusoidal things. And, and so this is just a simple harmonic oscillator. No driving, no damping, energy is conserved. So when you have damped harmonic motion, the way damping is introduced is through friction, is through uh, air resistance. And the most common way that damping is modeled is by adding a term. Oh, I don't remember it's minus or plus. Some term that's proportional to velocity. And the velocity in terms of the position function would be the first time derivative of position. It could be plus or minus, I don't remember. And um, here it's enough to get to this answer. There's an extra term proportional to velocity. So any anything that's a proportional to x, uh, or, or, I mean, this portion has to be there, otherwise you don't have any oscillation. Um, and uh, both of these are just, to, I, this one doesn't apply to any oscillation at all. This one is just a simple harmonic oscillator. You can also, this is a reading quiz, so you should be able to get this answer from the textbook. I'm just going through this a little more quickly. Okay, let's look at the last of the remaining reading quiz questions, and let's see where we are at. It says, um, when an oscillation is forced at the same frequency as the uh, natural oscillation, the situation is called resonance. Um, so when we say natural oscillation, that would be um, like simple harmonic oscillator. So, um, so in terms of acronyms we use, this would be SHO, simple harmonic oscillator, oscillation. Um, damping, that would be related to damped simple harmonic oscillator. And resonance is what happens, you know, it's the forced part. It's a damped and driven simple harmonic oscillator. And uh, when it's at the same frequency as the natural oscillation for, for spring, uh, mass on a spring, that would be square root of k over n. And the damping could be caused by either uh, friction, air resistance, or other sources. And, and resonance is something that only happens when there's a driven simple harmonic oscillator. And the, when the driving frequency is at this frequency, that's when uh, each cycle of oscillation builds up mechanical energy in the system. So that's called the resonance. I think people could just guess this because the other two cho choices don't seem anything close. So hopefully, um, if you got this question, and I mean, hopefully you read a textbook, <laughs> but somehow, uh, if you don't remember it from textbook, that this was enough, easy enough to guess. So that, that's all the reading questions. Again, uh, I was using them because I saw them in the system. It's uh, uh, programmed in by uh, uh, someone who's using, also using MyOpenMath. Uh, I don't know him or her, <laughs> but uh, I, I saw the questions. They seemed good, so you got those as your uh, first uh, question in the homework set.